students welcome back in this video i am going to share with you a very beautiful poem of your syllabus that is your textbook in english class 12th flamingo a thing of beauty by john keats and uh, don't stop watching this video in the middle when you watch the complete video it's going to be great watching this video if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe just now and also please don't forget to like the video if you really like it uh you can find the links for all my videos in the description box below explanation of all the chapters and poems uh, uh, the writing session part important literary devices and so on almost everything you can find there before i explain the poem let's have a glance of john keats our poet john keats was a british romantic poet although he was trained to be a surgeon he decided to devote himself completely to poetry john keats secret his power to influence and delight the readers lies primarily in the gift of perceiving the world and living his moods and aspirations in the terms of language this poem is an excerpt from his poem andymion a poetic romance the poem is based on a greek legend in which andymion a beautiful young shepherd and the poet who lived on mount latmus had a vision of cynthia the moon goddess the enchanted youth resolved to seek her and so wandered away through the forest and down under the sea now let's move into our poem a thing of beauty in this poem john keats explains how a beautiful thing in our life fills us with real and everlasting joy and its beauty or charm increases forever he says that the loveliness of a beautiful thing never fades a thing of beauty is a source of constant joy its beauty never passes into nothingness it's so comforting as a bower which is a peaceful and pleasant place in the shade of a tree providing shelter and protection from the heat of the sun and providing us good sleep full of sweet dreams good health and peaceful breathing in the midst of all the negativity in life the joy of the beautiful thing fills us with new strength when our whole life is surrounded with darkness and loss of hope some shape of beauty fills us with new hope and renews our energy in this poem john keats makes a list of the beautiful things and the painful things found in our lives but if we learn the secret shared by john keats we shall overcome all the negativities of life by the beautiful things that we have in our lives it's really an amazing poem please watch this video till the end as i explain the poem in detail now first five lines a thing of beauty is a joy for ever its loveliness increases it will never pass into nothingness but will keep a bower quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing in these lines the poet wants to say that a thing of beauty is a source of perpetual joy its beauty keeps on increasing it gives us everlasting joy its loveliness never fades away that is it never passes into nothingness 
a beautiful thing is as comforting as a bower which is a peaceful and a pleasant place in the shade of a tree providing shelter and protection from the heat of the sun it gives us good sleep a peaceful sleep that is full of pleasant dreams good health and peaceful breathing and now line 6 to line 13 Therefore, on every morrow we are wreathing a flowery bend to bind us to the earth. Spite of despondence, of the inhuman dearth, of noble natures, of the gloomy days, all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching. Yes, in spite of all, some shape of beauty. moves away the pall from our dark spirits in these lines the poet says that it is beauty alone that helps us to keep going on this earth as he says therefore on every morrow that is on every next day we are wreathing flowery bend to bind us to earth this means that a beautiful thing helps us to continue our life on this earth it binds us more closely to the earth we are able to continue to live by focusing on the beautiful things in life the poet says spite of despondence meaning in spite of loss of hope lack of nice people good people who have noble hearts though we are getting unsuccessful in all our efforts all our ways are over darkened the entire life is full of darkness and we are not able to see beyond the dark situations the poet says yes in spite of all the negative situations of life some shape of beauty moves away the pall pall means a cloth spread over a coffin purse or tomb and here extremely disappointing situations some shape of beauty moves away the pall from our dark spirits helps us to come out of the death like situations and now from line number 13 to line number 24 such the sun the moon trees old and young sprouting a shady boon for simple sheep and such are diffidence the green world they live in and clear rills that for themselves a cooling covered make gainst the hot season the mid forest break rich uh, with a sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms and such too is the grandeurs of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty dead all lovely tales that we have heard or read an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from the heavens drink in these lines the poet lists some of the beautiful things that bring charm to our life while we are facing a lot of negativities in life the beautiful things that help us to live a happy life in the midst of darkness and some of the examples of the beautiful things are the sun and the moon there are big and small trees that give pleasant shade for the innocent sheep then there are lovely daffodils with the green world in which they live beauty of the clear water of the streams all give soothing and pleasant experience in contrast to the warm and unpleasant weather of the hot sun the musk roses blooming in the forest also refresh the beholder and such is the magnificence or the glory or the grandeur of the dooms that we have imagined for the mighty dead 
who are mighty dead mentioned here? Our ancestors who were great in their own ways and the dead emperors have been referred as mighty dead in the poem. The mighty dead refers to the great men and warriors who glorified death by embracing it most gracefully. The stories of noble works inspire us a lot. The legends and stories fill us with new energy and strength as we imagine their magnificence. John Keats calls all these beautiful things an endless fountain of immortal drink that heaven itself is pouring down on us. It becomes a source of immense joy and peace for us. Such a beautiful poem. And to have a clear understanding of this poem, can you watch this video at least twice? Please like, subscribe and share. Thank you so much for watching.